Hey guys, welcome back to Carib 21, where we share news what's trending in and around the Caribbean. If it's your first time watching, please feel free to like, share, and hit that subscription button so we can share more information coming from in and around the Caribbean and the Caribbean diaspora. In today's video, I would like to talk about a 15-year-old young man that was killed in Toronto, Canada. His parents are from St. Lucia and this happened recently. So let's let's talk about it. Watching City News 24-7, I'm Melanie Ng. And I'm Faisa I mean, It was another violent weekend in the city. Toronto police are now investigating three separate fatal shootings. Our Shauna Hunt is tracking the latest on a shooting investigation that happened last night in North York. And Shauna, you've been gathering family reaction today from the scene. Yeah, so Mal, uh, like you said, it was an extremely violent weekend across Toronto. Three separate shootings, uh, three people gunned down in separate shootings, including the latest homicide that happened here in this North York Plaza. What we know so far is that many shots were fired around 7.45 last night. And, uh, you know, we actually spoke to family members of the victim uh, who came by uh, just, uh, like I said, in the last half hour or so. And they tell us that it was a 15-year-old boy uh, who was shot and killed outside this pizza shop. So we spoke to the family's aunt uh, and uh, a family friend uh, who came here to uh, light flowers and light candles. And as you can imagine, they are extremely distraught. They tell us this 15-year-old uh, boy was supposed to start grade 11 today. The guns that just shoot people like that. Just shoot the boy. The boy was a good child. It's just that he was stubborn. He wouldn't listen. He would when I tell him stay home, he doesn't want to stay home. He just want to be among his friends. But to say do people think what can he possibly do to him? Five to kill him. I want justice for him. I want the police because if there is camera, they have to arrest that person that do that to him because he didn't deserve to die like that. So just, uh, you know, absolute grief right now from family members. We know that they do live in an apartment building nearby and they saw all the commotion, not knowing at the time that it was, you know, their loved one who was down here um, being taken to hospital uh, and, and later died. Uh, so, you know, a family friend tells me that she was supposed to take the teenager to the CNE yesterday, but he decided to stay close to home instead and hang out with friends. Uh, now, our cameras last night did capture dozens of evidence markers uh, throughout the parking lot. Here. We did see a bullet hole through the window of the Tim Hortons and also this pizza shop. A bullet hole went through this window. I spoke to the owner inside and he was here when it happened. He says that the bullet narrowly missed him and two young children who were sitting uh, at a table inside when those shots were fired. Uh, so as for the investigation, police say that uh, the suspect fled the scene here in a dark colored four door sedan. That's the only description we have at the time. Uh, we also know that uh, investigators have been camping canvassing this plaza in the area uh, looking for video surveillance and they are hoping uh, you know this so that news clip was from city news canada and the young man that they're talking about went by the name of mario giddens that was killed outside of a tim martin's coffee shop in etobicoke in toronto canada a area that I'm, I'm very well familiar with and with canadian news because of his age being 15 years old, um, they do not put images of a minor on the news and sometimes they would not disclose, disclose the, the, the name of the, of the victim. So I'm going to play another video taken from um, a local TV station in St. Lucia and we're going to talk more about it right after this. Toronto police officers. 15-year-old Mario Giddings, whose parents are St. Lucian, was fatally shot near a plaza just outside a police station in Etobicoke. Police say it was a targeted attack involving multiple rounds of gunfire. The incident occurred near the apartment complex which he resided in with his aunt. Giddings was shot Monday, the day before he was to return to school. According to his aunt, Giddings was afraid to return to school due to a fight he was involved in previously. In an interview with CTV News, a parent of Giddings' friends indicated that youth from a different neighborhood had conflict with youth in Giddings' neighborhood. 
His mother, Leah Serafin, says that she gave birth to Giddings in Canada, but brought him back to St. Lucia. At the age of 10, she says her son indicated that he wanted to return to Canada. Thus, she sent him to live with his aunt in Canada. However, she never expected his life to come to such a violent end. Mario, he had like a lot of friends. For that one, he had like a lot of friends. He loved his friends. But when I call him, I was talking to him, I Mario, you have to leave your friends. Your friends, um, they're giving you bad, bad advice. I have to leave the friends. I was always talking to him about that. The mother says she last spoke to her son on Saturday. He also told her that he wanted to attend a different school due to fear of retaliation. I spoke to him the Saturday and he told me, Mom, I, want to, I don't want to stay in that school. There's the school that I'm not trying to trouble me in the school. So he wants to change his school. So I tell him, well, ask, talk to your auntie until we do that for you. And after that, um, the Monday, I, um, the, they shot him. She is calling on all St. Lucians to put down the guns and put God in the center of their lives. Kidding's grandmother says that she has not been able to sleep or eat. She admits that she did not have a close relationship with Giddings. Nevertheless, the grandmother broke down, recounting her last interaction with him when he came to visit the island in 2020. Kidding's grandmother says that she has not been able to sleep or eat. She admits that she did not have a close relationship with Giddings. Nevertheless, the grandmother broke down, recounting her last interaction with him when he came to visit the island in 2020. He was there with me, he come, in, oh, he come in there because you see the house there. He always there with me, talking with me. He back all his grandmother. He was always there with me, talking with me. Giddings was a past student of the St. Aloysius R.C. Boys Primary School. Teacher Dennis Leo is imploring young men to stay focused in order to make a positive contribution to St. Lucia. It is sad that, you know, a St. Lucian going overseas trying to achieve something ends up dead in that kind of way. It is really sad and I mean we have a situation in St. Lucia and it seems to be a global thing now everywhere around the world people are just young people are just falling to the gun you know so I am just appealing to the young people you know stay focused get off this six and seven and all this kind of violent attractions focus on school focus on achieving stuff get your, your minds, you know, in more positive things. Giddens would have been going to grade 11 at the Western Collegiate Institute. According to Giddings' mother, no arrests have been made yet in connection to her son's murder. Giddings was the youngest of seven siblings, six sisters and one brother. Giddings' mother says she is awaiting documents to travel to Canada to bury her son. For the DBS News World, Miriam Montout reporting. So that was the clip uh, from what's been reported in St. Lucia on the local news network in St. Lucia. And this is very sad. Toronto, Canada still remains a very safe country, a very safe um, province in, in Ontario, very safe city in Toronto. But this is extremely sad and this is a bit personal for me because what's interesting is that the school that Mario attended, and as you can see in the clip, that his mom stated that she got a call from him stating that he wanted to change schools because of bullying. That school is a school that I'm very familiar with. As a matter of fact, my eldest daughter went to that school and graduated a few years ago. Um, I live close to that area. It's not a bad area per se. It's like a middle class, lower middle class area. And the schools that are, the, the, the lower schools that are in that area also are very highly rated. But for whatever reason, that high school itself, um, the way how the Canadian um, school system is set up is that if you go to like a basic school, uh, the lower level school from grade one, from, from basic to grade one to grade five, you have to live in that community. Once you get into high school, you can travel from outside of the community. So what has been happening is that a lot of kids travel outside of the community to go to that school, to Western Collegiate. And uh, because of that, we had... My family, my wife and I was faced with the same problem that we have two younger kids that 
anytime the next few years would have to go to Western Collegiate. And because of that, and because of knowing the history, there's been stabbing, there's been like, you know, people carrying guns to school. Whenever I go to pick up my younger kids, I've seen numerous times where police is in that area. And because of that, we as a family made the choice that we're going to move from that area because we want our kids in better school. And that is so sad. And I believe that one of the things that we need to look into as a people, like Caribbean people, African people moving to North America, is that what is so evident um, in these cases, and I have a lot of data because I, I work in the community, you know, I've done work um, in nonprofit organizations within those same community. And most of the people that we have to reach out to are from single parent um, homes. And that, that's a sad reality because we see a city where it's very diverse. We have people from India, we have people from the Philippines, we have people from all over the world who comes from different so-called third world countries. But for whatever reason, when we look, when we turn on the TV in Toronto, I'm talking about in Canada, we see even though that, you know, black Canadians make up like a small section of the community, less than 10% of Toronto. And, but for whatever reason, whenever you see school, um, anything with incidents in school and a lot of, we make up over 35% of those incidents, even though we are less than 10% of the society. So for me, I think, I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but the reality is that most of the incident involving young black men in, especially in Toronto, is because majority of those young men come from single parent home. And that's something that we're going to have to look into as a community and we're going to have to try and fix this because, as I said, my son and my youngest daughter would have to go to that school. And, you know, I sat down with my wife based on information that we, we have that there's no way our kids are going to that school. Even if it means that we're going to have to move to a different community, um, to a different side of Canada, and to research schools in those areas to make sure that our kids are safe in school. That's a decision that I had to make as someone who responsibility is to make sure that I protect my wife and protect my kids. So I think that as a community, this is something that we're going to have to look into on the long term. And it's, it's as I said, it's so sad. And if anyone watching from St. Lucia and you have any information, if there's a GoFundMe set up, because I know in order for his mom to come to Canada to, for funeral and, and funeral arrangements and, and that's expensive. So if there's anyone from St. Lucia watching and know about a GoFundMe, please hit me up in the comment section so we can reach out to um, community organizations or St. Lucians living in Canada to make sure that the mom is not, his mom is not doing this by herself and also his aunt. So guys, please remember to like, share, and subscribe as I bring you more content from in and around the Caribbean and the Caribbean diaspora. And remember, peace. I'm out.